Um, what's it for Vertigo? Vertigo. How does it go? Um, <laughs> none of the us. The lights go down, the dark, the da 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 Search Spotify for <laughs> Vertigo. Can I hit you in the tooth? So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two years later, he's like, <laughs> ships all over. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we have to check at Bill's teeth to see how long we've been doing this. Right. <laughs> like tree rings. Brought to you by ADP Dental Insurance. <laughs> you ready to rock? I don't know. I don't. This doesn't sound familiar. I this is Bono. I haven't actually heard this song in a long time. Me either. Time. Oh, as in, wow! I'm an idiot. I'm thinking of like Cher Bono. No. no. Bono. Yeah. We are rolling and under copyright. And pre- <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. It's all good. How do I know? Fuck. Uh. Stop it, Bono. All right. We're getting uncomfortable. Yeah, we got to get our lawyers on the phone. Avoid the lawsuit. Okay. Are we going? We're live. We're live. All right. Everyone, welcome back to another just exciting episode of Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing. Um, I'd like to start today's episode with a wager. How does that sound? Phil, are you a wager? A wager. A bet. Sure. Sandrick, you down for a wager? Sure. All right. Look. John? Sounds What's on good. the line, that uh, brown chicken and pasta? So, it's <laughs> let's see. Nothing. Nothing. It's just a prediction I have mm. that I think before we're done here today, Zach will have to leave abruptly to go shit his brains out in the bathroom. Is that, that's that's my wager. I bet that'll happen. I'll take the under. I'll double, <laughs> <laughs> I'll double that in a wager. We're going to take this podcast into the bathroom with Zach. Oh no, you're not gonna want that. <laughs> <laughs> so a little. Background. I didn't want this. <laughs> uh, Zach, Sandry, and I uh, stopped at a Brown's Chicken and Pasta on the way here. I had a lovely chicken parm sandwich. And Zach, how would you describe the buffalo macaroni and cheese? Um. Speechless. The, uh, I've imagined the meal that the garbage pail kids would feed to like their family friends when they came over to the <laughs> yeah uh, uh, f- from the movie from any oh okay thing that it's awful it's disgusting is what it is is it looks like it looks like something that was in the sun for several hours before i got it it had to have gone bad weeks ago it reminds me of uh when i go on my regular bike ride there's a place there's an area where I go by the woods that really has no way to go in, and that's where they throw all the animals that got run over, and that smell. It's kind of <laughs> what it reminds me. And that's what motivates me that to go a- That actually, that area, I think, is right behind that brown's chicken. Oh. So maybe maybe that's where they source their meat <laughs> oh from. So anyway, a very special thank you to today's sponsor, Brown's Chicken and Pasta. Thank uh, you for, for lunch. Fuck you, Brown's Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, you can look them up on brownschickenandpasta.com. Um, what else is shaking? Phil, any announcements? Anything new? Ross is a total poser. Ross is a poser. Yeah. he's. A w- we went to see... Uh, wait, yester- was that yesterday? Mm, no, no, two, two days, days ago. ago. Yeah. Uh, Slayer, Lamb of God, Behemoth, Testament, and Anthrax. But w- nobody saw <laughs> Testament... Uh, we saw a little bit of Behemoth, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And apparently, Slayer fans are a bunch of posers, and that's why Ross didn't go. So we just decided to be posers and and say fuck him, and we went. Yeah. 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 Fuck him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, you weren't there, were you, Sandry? No, I wasn't. Poser. Because he, well, he didn't want to be a poser, you know, right? Yeah. Right. Uh, that's why I avoided it. Also, I don't listen to Slayer, but. 
It was a good time. I got to pay sixteen dollars for a fucking like tall boy of Bud Light Limerita. Right, sixty nothing says metal like sixty dollars shirts and <laughs> booty shorts, dude. Right, fourteen dollar Bud Light. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. The booty shorts, My sixty dollars. You know that is disgusting, unheard of. You know, I thought the, the Limerita thing was ridiculous, but sixty dollar booty shorts and they don't even have my size. They didn't. They didn't have any extra large. Right? I asked. Really? That's a, that's discriminatory. Isn't that Slayer, bullshit? Right? Slayer should be able to fit on these big buns, you know? Exactly right. Exactly right. Uh, how many bandanas did everyone buy? I bought uh, I bought 12 of the $25 bandanas. Um, I, didn't, I, I bought the uh, Slayer teacup set. Oh, yeah. That was... Oh, God. I hate that shit. Yeah. I don't know. That's not really my cup of tea. Huh? <laughs> Uh, it's Pozo. Th- it's the fucking Pozo. food. It's the <laughs> I blame the food. That, yeah, yeah, it's the food. Uh, if later on in the show you talk about your new job, Phil, I have a joke about that, which I think is oh, on okay. par with with Sandry's joke there. Yeah, well, um, did I tell you guys? <coughs> does, does everyone know I started a new job? Or? I I did not hear this. No. Well, I I was congratulations. I think. Yeah, yeah, dude. I'm. I, Everyone's been telling me I'm a much chiller person, not angry. I, I've been listening to less angrier bands, so I'm guessing. Yeah, I was at Slayer, and I was like, "This is this is chaos." Why are they shouting? These are posers, you know. Um, and b- but the the journey to look for a new job was kind of interesting. Uh, first thing, I just wanted. To, I was curious. I don't know why. I I looked up. There was a cemetery position. Yeah, and I wanted to see like what in like what what's cemetery maintenance? How much does it you know pay? Sure. And what do you have to do? It, it had that stuff like you know you got to obviously dig out the grave, you got to mow the lawn, and the one of the best parts was funeral benefits. Uh, er, the no the yeah the benefits are twenty five percent off funeral discount. Ooh. Right? What other? I mean, you can be. You get to be. That's such a bizarre, like, selling point. Right. Like your burial will be way cheaper. Right. Well, I mean, I feel. But does it expire? Is the is the question? Is it like a catch twenty two sort of thing? Be like, you get twenty five percent off your own burial, but you have to attend it. I I, I'm not I'm not sure. I I wish I could ask because that just immediately caught me because I was like, you know, I'm gonna go to parties and start conversations with you and be like. Is anyone in your family dying soon? <laughs> I get you I a got deal. the hookup. <laughs> yeah. you, know? you need someone buried, I'm your guy. <laughs> mm. And then, so I almost, I wanted to, I almost, I got a call from like a garbage man position, which is like, you know. Sh- they sh- supposed to, uh, supposed to get paid really well and great benefits. Especially in Crook County, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You get fucking good. But, um, and the bribes on the side for all the bodies. Yeah, yeah. exactly. For the cemetery. Yep, that, exactly they, right. that they dump in that lot outside of Brown's Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I was just about to say that. <laughs> so yeah. it's a little food service. It's oh, well, Food disservice. What I, what I found out is you need a CDL to be the driver. Okay, commercial driver's license. And um, that's, that's just way too much of a pain in the ass because they're like, yeah, you need a two years experience or you need somebody to tell them, no, this guy's good. Let him drive. Let him drive. He's never fucking driven before, but he's good. And I don't know any guys that'll be able to vouch for me like that, Unle- unless you guys want to talk in that accent sure. for me. Yeah, so you yeah. need two years experience or an Italian relative? I need a relative. Cockney accent to <laughs> say that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so you're not a cemetery worker. You're not a sanitation worker. Nope. What kind of worker um, are you, Phil? So I, I decided to do welding again, and uh, I I went to the first... So So I got a call from this place called... And I looked them up on Google, and they had one star. Absolutely fucking horrible business. Always late on delivery. I'm like, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'll I'll wait for the interviews. I won't get too excited. But I know that welders are pretty rare. You know, I mean, I asked Kelly, like, do you guys know any fucking welders? Anybody? No. no. And and Kelly's like, you know, because I I was kind of on her ass for. This whole weekend? No, it's my birthday weekend. So. So yeah, I you're on her ass. <laughs> No, but no. I mean, I was on her. <laughs> fuck, I, I was on her as about like getting a computer job, and you know, c- IT is kind of like everybody's doing computer shit now, so it's it's harder to get that job. But welders are so fucking rare. I'm like Kelly, like if I I, I applied to 15 places and I got 15 interviews the next week, so I I kind of held off on suburban surgical one fucking review, you know, and the day of going to suburban surgical, I'm like, oh, nobody called me. I'll go here. 
an hour before this place called bear welding calls me i go in there dude this fucking place this guy looks like he hasn't looks like he ran his hair through the brown chicken and pasta meat <laughs> and oh he he's just chilling at his de- li- like this the welding shop is the size of this room right here so like what 15 by 10 feet and <laughs> there's g- tanks like pulling bricks from the wall by the chains they're connected to or like ready to fall he's like run some beads for me so i i weld a little bit he's like yeah you don't gotta set up the machine or anything uh i'm not gonna do some random test on you it'll be easy i'm like yeah these knobs are broken off yeah that's why i can't set it up random like oh okay (laughs) and then i do it and i couldn't do it right because yeah it was kind of zapping randomly so he goes here let me show you this is what i kind of am looking for and the whole time, I failed to mention, he's not wearing a shirt, and he looks like he just <laughs> dove into a pot of boiling water from welding with no fucking shirt on. Yeah, you because know? it's fucking st- that's the dumbest <laughs> shit in the yeah. world. And, and I mean, a- at least if I was him, I'd be goofy about it. Like, put some, like, you know, written in paper sexy on there so that it tans sexy on me or something. But a- anyways, he fucking... Um, I ask him, I'm like, so... Do you get? Do you guys have health insurance here? After seeing how fucking pink he is, I sure hope so. Like, well, you know, we can't really afford that because we had the group package. I had twenty guys here, but they were all fucking around on their phones, so I fired them all. I'm like, oh, there's you know, great stability here, great benefits, and so yeah. So I, you I, accepted I, the job. I I I told I shot high. I'm like, yeah, give me twenty thirty an hour. You know, he's like. All right, I'll give you a call by the end of the day if I pick you. We got two other welders coming in. I'm like, all right. And I go to... Was the place... That was the second interview gotcha. I went to. The one with the one star. And and here's the funniest thing. Bear welding has five stars on Google. Don't fucking trust ratings. The one don't with the pink tr- man. Don't trust ratings anywhere. That, that's the same thing I get with Netflix. Like, everything's that shitty ratings. Like, mm. I love and, you know, vice versa. But... Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure their rating system's broken. Like they have people. Everything's like three and a half stars. On Netflix yeah. or Google? Oh, uh, Netflix. Or no, actually, no, I'm thinking Hulu. Never mind. You don't, don't listen to me. That's a man. The mac and cheese. We're getting sued by everyone. Hulu, <laughs> Netflix, <laughs> bear <laughs> welding. <laughs> the yeah, these fucking guys fucking around a podcast. <laughs> I had to sue those assholes. So the joke I wanted to make. Are you? Are you ready for this? All right. You're all ready. So would you say? All's weld that ends weld. That's it. Uh, <laughs> all right, I think that's what that guy's going to say. That joke deserves to be a Browns chicken <laughs> entree. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you win the wager. You get the cas- <laughs> casserole or I forgot what it's called. Because well, food disservice was so much funnier. <laughs> it was, damn it. Whatever. It was also accurate. I try so hard. You know what was weird that made me kind of feel guilty, though? The number one question... On the, uh, do you feel bad that we make uh, tables and cages for animal testing? I don't know. But that was an interview question? Yeah. Because, I, I don't know, I guess maybe like Peta went after them or something. Yeah, because hmm. I, w- I weld Bad. cages all day. Hmm. So, I don't know if that's uh. sparks up a fucking... I mean, I was just thinking, Kelly's been pretty chill, but after marriage... It kind of get out of hand, and sure. I make custom cages. Right, so it's perfect. Man, forget the cheaper funerals. You've got the real yeah, right bonus yeah. now. The real job perk, mm-hmm. all the cages, cages. you want. <laughs> yeah, buried alive by Slayer. That oh, perfect, good. So um, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you brought Slayer back up. One of the mm-hmm. funniest things about that show, uh, when Lamb of God was yeah. playing. Um, you know, like, rah, 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 and like super intense. And then Randy would stop and say, all right, come on, everyone, sing along. And then go back to like the, <laughs> like, rah, 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 rah. and I'd like, are they saying words? Were people singing along? Like, huh. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I need to look up the lyrics, like laid to rest. I don't know. You know, I, I, I found out with metal because, <coughs> you know, I, I, I listen to equal amounts of like psychedelic folk balanced with metal. Because I'm just all over, up and down everywhere, mm. and I realize that metal, I I like it better when I don't understand it. Because when I do read the lyrics, I'm like, man, this, this is, is fucking a fucking stupid. yeah, this is a Skyrim scroll, you know, <laughs> like, or or this is just some 
you know, athlete getting pissed off that, you know, he high school's over and he's not the football star anymore. Some, you know, sure. some hate breed motivational lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it uh, Disturbed? I think it was Disturbed or a, another big name band like that, that their first album when they first were starting off was just them reading obituary reports and like mortician reports over their music. I, I don't know. Mm. I can't remember. I think it was Disturbed. It was one of like one of the bands in that vein. Like that's all. That's what they did Oops. for their first album. It was just their music and them like like growling fucking you know obituaries and mortuary reports. Well, it's pretty metal. That's pretty metal. It is pretty, that's yeah. pretty metal. God, they, w- they don't play big venues, do they? Because those sellouts. <laughs> The posers. I would never see Swipknot yeah, at wait. the United Center. It's pussies. The posers, man. All right. Sp- speaking of dumb metal shit, um, yeah, like I mentioned before, uh, I, I think I asked John before about, you guys know the stereotypical fucking Tool fan, right? What music do you listen to? Tool. What genre is that? Tool. Nothing but Tool. It's, it's kind of almost like, I would say, fish fans. But it's like nothing but and so oh no, fish fans are the worst. All right, fella. Well, well, no, no, with fucking dude. So th- recently on tour is uh, all of the band of Tool besides the two main writers S- Maynard and the guitarist, right? Yeah. So the rest of the Tool band is going on tour, talking about the intricacies of the great construction of Tool songs. For five hundred dollars a ticket, and if you want a special drum lesson from the drummer himself, it's only nine hundred dollars more, right? Why would anyone do that? Well, it's sold out in one day, right? Uh, so, so we gotta figure out that business model. Yeah, right. So I'm telling Maynard, why don't you just shit in people's mouths for ten thousand grand a ticket? I'm yeah. sure that'll sell out, like that. And then we can have a whole documentary of the you know meaning. That sounds great Full as long as no one who cares about fish is there. All right. What's your deal with fish? I don't like the I don't like the jam band guys, the people who come along with jam bands. I'm a huge Almond Brothers fan myself, but I love Almond Brothers. I I some of the people who are really into it, I cannot stand. Mm-hmm. Also, I don't like the Grateful Dead. There I said it. I don't like the Grateful Dead. I think their music is irritating and too long, and it does. It's just not. I know. I know this is unpopular, and I know I've said this at on tour before, where they all they play is uh, mm-hmm. Grateful Dead. You know, uh, maybe just some of the brilliance and the artistry oh. and sophistication <laughs> is just uh, maybe a little too subtle for you to grasp. Um, and I think that's one of my favorite things about the Almond Brothers is that you know it's like very, I'd say simple. Like maybe even like boorish. Like there's not really a lot of depth there, you know. Oh, you went after the Almond Brother. You <laughs> could go after me, but you can't go after <laughs> Greg and Dwayne Almond. I'm just mad you didn't share your macaroni and cheese. Oh. <laughs> that, that well, be, no, I, you know, I, I think the biggest right? problem with bands like fucking Tool, Grateful Dead, even like Beatles, that shit is like so Beatles, crazed, so fucking crazed, but it's so fucking average to be that crazed. Well, the it's like Kiss. You it's know? because they were so like it's all the timing of when they you know Beatles. It's because they were the first band to do that, and it, you know the Pink Floyd even has that sort of like culty following by certain people where it's it's all they swear by and that's it. But I, I like Pink Floyd though. I love Pink Floyd. They're not they're not on I think my they list could. of things that I hate. But uh, Grateful Dead I can't stand. Fish is all right. Fish is alright. I just don't like people who yeah, I, fish around. I, I don't. I don't mind Grateful Dead. I don't. I don't. I guess I wouldn't mind fish. Like if we were playing it right now in the background, but it's not mind blowing. You know, same with like, I'll listen to Tool maybe once, twice a year, but it's not gonna make me pay nine hundred fucking dollars to go. Yeah, and then and then I thought about that one time this bitch dumped me, so I wrote Prison Sex. <laughs> and th- you know, is there a a band you would pay nine hundred dollars to see? Probably, n- I don't know what I would pay $900 to see. Living? Yeah, yeah I was going to say, like, Jimi Hendrix, maybe. <laughs> I was going to say, there are people who are dead that I might pay that much for. Yeah, for... De- for. I guess, yeah, so that's kind of... <laughs> if a time machine is involved, that would be cool. Yeah, that might be worth it, but... 
and a bargain at nine hundred dollars well, for well, a time well, machine. How, I mean, how it's got to be more expensive. How, than that. Yeah, how an about, open bar and, and, open, and bar. open bar. <laughs> yeah, how about, how about yeah? What would you guys pay nine hundred? That's living for can anything. We, can we do a lineup? Or does it have to be <laughs> one? Nothing. Any anything for to fucking uh, new guitar a hand job from Arnold? <laughs> even you know, it could be anything. What would you pay fucking nine hundred dollars like? Entertainment wise, I, I I don't know if I could name anything like that. Like that would be worth that. Hmm. Uh, Especially a band. I'd pay just, pay nine hundred dollars to get a to watch a Russian hookers pee on the president of the United States. Ooh, there you go. I feel like somehow we could work it out being that free. <laughs> it yeah. might somehow be. We'll we just find keep out waiting. <laughs> yeah, it'll happen. Isn't his wife a Russian hooker? And I'll, now all we have no, to do is work out the pee <laughs> shit. You know. Now, now we just got to find that video. It already happened. You know? Right. <laughs> All right, computer science people out there, start digging. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a call to action. from. Uh, we already got a thousand applications filled out. Maybe like a really cool concert in like Mexico or maybe Europe. with like For $900. Yeah. You know, like including the flight. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, or like Tupac. I think that'd be cool. You know. T- to oh. see him or hang out with him? Uh, both. <laughs> Both. Yeah. I should know I'd rather hang out with Biggie Smalls because Tupac doesn't seem very fond of white people in a lot of his songs. Whereas, like, mm-hmm. Biggie's. How would you. <laughs> Biggie give you, like, a better. I am more friendly with white people. Uh, no. So. <laughs> no. So Tupac is all like, America. Well, America. Tupac's America. K- k- and, and, it, and, it, and his. Uh, his ma is, like, a huge anti white Black Panther crackhead. And then Biggie's, like, more like. I think he was like mob connected in the New York with with the businesses he ran. I don't know. His music's like let's smoke blunts, let's fuck bitches, whereas like Tupac is a bit more real, uh, real maybe like more militant maybe militant certainly. Um, and then you know and then he writes ghetto gospel, so who, who fucking knows? Not really? not to be an asshole, would you pay nine hundred dollars to go back in time to watch Tupac get shot? No, no. No, I don't care that enough about that. I think it'd be, I don't know, it'd be kind of a cool, I mean, not exactly that event, but it'd be kind of cool to go to, like, historical events like that and see that shit. Curious I just see. I just watch Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, so that's where this is coming from. I would go back in time to see the Chicago Fire, take a picture of that shit. I, none uh, of them exist. Watching people get shot, John Lennon would be one that I would watch. Ooh. I agree. Just curiosity. No way, that'd be, like, like, terrifying. I'd be like, Yoko's right over there, and you got (laughs) some bullets left. I was going to say, train the gun (laughs) on the right person. (laughs) Um, Just that walking bowl of mac and cheese. (laughs) 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 No, I think that'd be, like, horrific. I would never want (laughs) to see, like, that shit, like... Like, oh yeah, let's go see the JFK that might, assassination. That, that might be what that would be. That would be another interesting thing to to watch. But that like, I don't know if I could. I don't know if I could handle actually watching someone. You know, as a joke. But I don't know if I could handle actually watching someone get shot. Have you seen the video of the JFK assassination? Yes, yeah. I have. Like that's so. Th- it looks up. like that mac and cheese, man. It's oh, you know the one that really fucked me. This is uh, Zach Kempel showed me this the video of the Texas uh, politician who shoots himself at a conference. Oh yeah. Oh, that thing that was fucked up. That was real fucked up. Dude, yeah. so so this is real popular now. So I, I was just telling John about this and showing him the trailer. You guys got to fucking watch this. It's, uh, it, 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 Kelly, it gave Kelly anxiety. And I read about this bank heist like three months ago, but I didn't hear the whole story. Did you guys hear about the show Evil Genius? No. no. Dude, it is fucking amazing. I only heard the first part of it, and I didn't hear the whole thing. So I heard the first part, the short part, which is there was a guy... That they that these bank robbers kidnapped a uh, pizza delivery guy, and they said they locked uh they like they like beat him up, locked a fucking bomb to his neck. Oh, I think you were talking about the yeah. The, the, I I said that before, right? Yeah, and they I, had the him rob a bank, right? Yeah, yeah. and and he walks into his bank. He's like, "Give me all the fucking money, or this is blowing up." And then the cops are like, "No, you're full of shit. You're full of shit." They had him sitting on the ground. In between two cop cars, and the cops are like over the cop car, watch him. They're like, "You're full of shit." He's like, "Listen, give me the money. You got ten minutes left." He's like, "Yeah, sure, sure, whatever." Explodes right there with the fucking cop cars. I watched this documentary, 
and I didn't know the full fucking story. This had to do with there's this completely manipulative bitch, uh, Marjorie Deal or something. Okay, so first thing was she went. She was like really. She was a hoarder. She had a lot of mental issues. She was spoiled her whole life, got everything she wanted, knew exactly how to manipulate every single person, went out with a guy. I think, I, I don't know if I'm getting the story right. The first boyfriend, um, uh, she was just trying to get all his money and shit, and uh, he wouldn't, he just, yeah, wouldn't give in. So she kind of assisted in his suicide or something. Like, he was like, yeah, should I kill myself? And, and, she and was she's like, like yeah, yeah, drink here. this, take these pills. And... She went to trial. They were going to charge her with manslaughter. She, she got away with it. Next boyfriend, super abusive. Starts. She she tries to use him. So he gets more abusive because he keeps. She keeps like pressing the right buttons. Shoots him with a shotgun. Goes to trial. Says I I was in dangerous space. I didn't know how to get out of this, so I shot him. Gets away with it. Now this third boyfriend builds this fucking bank bomb, and yeah. And so she was the one who built the bomb? She she was the one that manipulated all these dudes to fucking do this shit for her. This, this like, triangle to, of dudes. Oh, my God. Oh, so this was, like, a targeted action? Yeah. Oh. Like, like she, what she a got, way to go, man. She was going out with this guy who was, like, super smart, owned a company. He's like, you need to learn how to build bombs. Then he's, then... Uh, okay, sweetie. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, what is that conversation like? I need a <laughs> hobby, babe. What do you think? How about... Ben bombs. <laughs> IEDs. <laughs> yeah, it was. I don't. I don't know. It was just really You're good with your hands. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, how does how does it end? Like, were things pretty explosive in the bedroom? <laughs> ah. <laughs> so cop cars blow up. She gets away. Um. Well, it it took like ten fucking years to solve the case because they couldn't. So the reason the reason why it was crazy is because so there's the bank case, right? The bomb case, and then. In the boyfriend who built the bomb, they found the body of one of the other guys involved in the thing in his garage. Oh, Lord. And they're like, well... well that's his mistake. Yeah, Clearly, he didn't have a 25% well, 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 he was, burial. <laughs> he, was, he was keeping it there because she didn't want to get rid of the body yet. So he was like pussy whipped for her. Why did she know? There's, there's part. There's more to that story. Yeah, right? yeah, Why yeah. Was she no, keeping I, the body. <laughs> Honestly, I just had like five multigoyas in a row, and I, I am like so fucking high off caffeine and sugar right now. I'm tweaking right now. <laughs> I'm not even kidding, dude. You know what really? I did not. I did not want to get fucked up today, <laughs> and this is too much. And I am tweaking. Put on some Grateful Dead, man. Some mellow vibes. Uh, Chill fuck you right no. out. Slayer, <laughs> Pozos. Yeah, that's that's all that's running through my mind right now. Jerry Garcia is overrated. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think we need to consider, like you mentioned, what, the Grateful Dead, the Beatles, and there was a third, Fish maybe. I think we need to remember how prolific they were and how much music they created and their consistency. Their well, I mean, weird Consistency. Out. The Grateful Dead, d no consistency. That's the whole point. And they're consistently good. Blues riff and different solos each song, right? Isn't that like every jam band? Isn't that every song <laughs> ever written? Not blues riffs. Oh. <laughs> well, I think if you look at everything in a general enough sort of way. How about classical piano then? That's all blues riffs. That's a different formula. All right, let's stop fighting. Yeah. <laughs> I like the Grateful Dead, and so does John. Right, John? Oh, I know. I'm pissed off. Yeah, I like the Grateful Dead. Yes. All right. Things are getting a little aggressive here. How's your stomach feel, Sandry? <laughs> not great. <laughs> it's not great. Ah. Oh, shit. Quick announcement. Sandra quit smoking. I did. Yeah, I did quit smoking. Oh, it must be, it must be tough for you right now. <laughs> I was it's actually not that bad. Uh, it, was, it was a lot easier than I thought. It was one of those things where it was just like I was done. I was just done doing it. I wasn't, didn't it's make not feel a good. tough process right now? No, it wasn't. That. I quit about a little over two weeks ago. And you didn't feel like anxiety or shit like... Oh, I mean, sure, sure a little bit. And I still you know, get a craving from time to time, but really it hasn't been nearly as hard as I thought it would be. I think I was just done. Uh, Saving a lot of money. Yeah, that's a huge... That's noticeable already. Yeah. Do you feel rich? Like, what? 
Uh, got no, so much money for <laughs> Buffalo Mac. I, apparently, rich enough to have uh, have my card stolen. So that happened to me. And of course, this is a four day holiday weekend with no banks open, and uh, someone stole my card on Friday night. <laughs> so I had to shut down the card, and they're mailing me a new one. It takes ten days. Oh. So mm. I have, and you're gonna put a palm around. And I just wasted eight dollars on this piece of shit bull. <laughs> Of my of the only cash I have for this weekend. Uh, more money, more problems, right? That's what they say. That's what they say, but I don't think that's fucking true. <laughs> um, oh uh, man! Imagine all the Buffalo Mac we could oh afford if we just had a little more money. Uh, if we get that promotion. But my range has come back, which is great because I had I didn't realize range? how much I had lost uh, vocal range. Oh. Nice. I didn't realize how much I'd lost, and it's uh, it's come way back. And That's I can nice. smell. That's weird. <laughs> What's that like? I t- <laughs> right now it's interesting because I can smell this <laughs> mixed with the, this the cigar, and it's sure. I prefer the cigar. And I didn't shower today, so probably getting some of that. Yeah, too. we weren't gonna. I wasn't gonna talk about that on the air. And Sorry. Mike, yeah, Go on. moving on to bad smell. My cat <laughs> shits and farts all the time. My new cat. Yeah, I got a I got a kitten now. Um. That fucking thing. So, y- yeah, we got Lucy was like, what, two months ago, which is like, a m- I don't know, medium cat size. And I, me and Kelly decided that, oh, fuck, you know, we get home at like six, get tired as fuck, go to bed at like nine or ten and don't want to play with cats all week. And then the weekend's like for our time. So I'm like, oh, man, we're d- these cats are lonely as shit. We need to get Lucy a buddy. And we got this kitten the size of like a water bottle. And... His belly's like the size of a softball, though, because he's a fatty and eats all day. <laughs> and uh, we thought it'd be a good idea for Lucy, but he just fucks with Lucy all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and and I didn't know um, it was dewormed twice, so it's got some stomach issues. And my fucking luck, I got food poisoning the week that we got this kitten. You know, you know when you get like flu or food poisoning, like you know you have to. Currently th- happening, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you know what, and, and and so you probably know this feeling now, where you know you should throw up, but you don't want to, or you don't have the energy to, because you got to empty all that brown chicken and pasta waste. <laughs> you know? So well, I yeah, fucking it's a lot like that. <laughs> are, are, am like, I I'm gonna have to void my bowels at a certain point. <laughs> my my kitten crawls on my fucking chest like spread butthole in my face tears mm. ass right there and right there i hurled everything like it was so <laughs> on the cat no i i made it to the bathroom but i <laughs> hurt my ankle running there like <sighs> so you, you gotta meet the meet the cat to make you yeah, make man. yourself feel better <laughs> you just oh, gotta now, now that you can smell no, i can already feel the pressure <laughs> mounting building I uh, like I said, I took the under. So <laughs> yeah, no, I I I didn't know that um kittens you have to feed them until they stop eating, because when you look at the can, it says like adult cats eat once a day, then like young cats all eat the time, like twice a day, and then kittens feed them as much as they fucking will eat, and that's why it has like a belly the size of a softball and shits nonstop, <laughs> like. <laughs> Um, and, and that's, and it farts when it gets, when it's finally fucking exercising, like you're, you know, playing with it or it's pulling some Spider-Man shit on the walls, you know, mm. on, on the cat castle. Yeah. Oh, that thing's ridiculous. It's like for small children. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> Crazy. I originally built it for a midget, but we had to return that to the adoption place. It wasn't like in the house. Yeah. No. <laughs> No yeah. comment. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna move on from that. <laughs> do you have your lighter, Bill? I do. Yeah. See, that's kind of what I wanted that midget. Lighter, please. No. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, <laughs> switch, <laughs> switching topics. Um, 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 um. Mm. So I didn't mention. Um, I didn't light it yet. Uh, I didn't mention how I got this. I forgot about that. So I go to the surgical, suburban surgical, right? Yeah. And they give me a welding test. And the weird thing is that I'm better. So there's, for those of you who don't know or watching, most people don't know, MIG, every time you see a picture of a welder, like generic advertisement or something, there's sparks flying everywhere and they got a helmet. 
That's MIG. That's pretty much like glue gun, where there's. Did I mention this before? Or I don't. Well, an, anyway, so it's like there's two pieces, and you pretty much got a blue gun that's feeding a fucking wire, and you're just laying glue, metal glue, in between these two fucking pieces. That's the easiest fucking welding in the world. I mean, I, I could probably, I could literally probably control that fucking gun with my foot and weld. And for some reason, because I, I'm good with my hands, I quite a mastered masturbator sure. and a guitar player and i build models I, so i'm You're a multi i'm actually yeah multi exactly no complaints <laughs> intended no but um i so tig welding is where you're feeding a wire and you're kind of you're like heating up the you're melting the two metals together while feeding a new so compound of metal so into it so it's like closer to soldering yeah then but but soldering's it's, a bitch but but it's do, like, strengthening it. the metal with that compound, so it's okay. like actually like safer. Like e- everything you see like in pools and when they when you weld pipe, it's like all TIG welding. And for some reason, I'm better at that. So I go to this sh- shop, Suburban Surgical, and they're like, "Yeah, do a test for me." But they told me to fuse and fuse. You're not feeding a wire. You're just melting the two together, which is kind of like it's weak because you're forming a groove. You're kind of like it melts down a little bit. Oh, yeah, so yeah, I yeah. just like melt, like there's just lava dripping. I'm like, wow, I fucked up this test, you know? And this guy's like, yeah, okay, I know everything. You weld five years? Get, okay, I know everything. No, you don't weld five years. I'm like, well, I used to weld with wire. You know, I was like kind of pissed off. Like right away, he's like, okay, get out of here, you know? I'm like, okay, show me with wire. And I do it perfectly with wire. And he's like, ah, where are you from? I'm like, dude, I'm totally fucking pulling this card. So I start speaking half Polish, half English. Oh, yeah, yes, I'm from, uh, sh- yeah, I'm from Schamburg. Yeah, my rodzice, no, my parents are from, he's like, oh, so you Polish too. And he's like, yeah, uh, yeah, I know. S- sometimes I'm, uh, people don't see I'm Pol- I'm a little bit tan, so they think I might be a little gypsy. Like, I was going to ask, but... <laughs> <laughs> and, and then he goes, you know what? If I give you raise, if you can gypsy me right now, show me how to pickpocket. I'm like, no, no, I, I just look <laughs> like it. I just look like it. I don't know. How. Okay, anyways, forget about it. You got the job. That's it. That was my <laughs> fucking interview. So, two of the interview questions. One was, are you comfortable welding cages? The other <laughs> is, are you a gypsy? Are you yeah, a gypsy? Right? <laughs> How many stars is this? This is the one star place? Yeah, yeah. This Can't one. imagine where their ratings are coming <laughs> from. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and guess they're not real popular with the Romani. <laughs> but yeah. the, you know, the product is great, but their customer service is just too anti-gypsy for me. <laughs> yeah, right, man? Is there such a thing? I was just getting nervous. I'm like, I really like this because I don't have to deal with people and I can listen to music all day, but I don't want to just listen to Gogol Bordello, you know? Right. <laughs> like... Okay, I'm going to switch it up today. How about Slayer? <laughs> uh, don't be a poser, Phil. Oh, I'm pissed off right now. All right, I'm pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> gypsy, gypsy, gypsy. I bet you that guy knows the owner of uh, EJ Pierogi and Auto uh, Auto Center. <laughs> oh, yeah, on our sad journey to find But food. what is EJ Pierogi? <laughs> okay, so... And I know this. It's off of. It's off it's of. Like uh, the place. I think <laughs> Oakton and Higgins in Elk Grove Village. It's right by where I work, actually. Yeah. But you, you work in Elk Grove. A, yeah, I work in Elk Grove. Okay. Um, off of Bonnie. Okay. Bonnie and Oakton. Okay. Um, I used to write, work right by Heavenly Bodies. Not not at. Okay. Heavenly Bodies. It, it, <laughs> there's not a lot around there. No, there's no, the I, Heavenly I, Bodies in construction. No, shit. no, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I I worked at uh on Elmhurst and uh. Forgot what it was like Elmhurst and Tui. Okay, think. yeah, I know exactly where that's at. Yeah, that's real close to where. It, but uh, there's this place off of it's I think it's Oakton Higgins, and there's a there's an auto body or like an auto center, you know, oil changes that sort of shit. Like a local local right. place, like not like it, not like a Jiffy Lube or whatever. Yeah. Um, and it's you know this old you know auto brick building and then attached to it <laughs> is a place called ej pierogi's polish bistro which is a equally shitty looking brick building <laughs> at a different height but attached 
to the other building. Yeah. Like looking like something that they plucked from Poland and put down here. Painted, oh, that's shitty. Painted a shitty, that shitty yellow, shitty. like <laughs> hand painted yellow called EJ Pierogies. And so so every time I, I think of it now, it's EJ Pierogies and, and Auto Center. Yeah, that, right. that I, I'm convinced that they're owned by the same people and that the guy coming in from doing oil changes just wipes his hands off on a towel to make <laughs> a sandwich. Extra greasy pierogies <laughs> today. <laughs> Cigarette lit. <laughs> I am EJ. Here's your dinner. Nobody likes motor oil on their pierogies anymore. <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> It's a fresh take on like the the KFC Taco Bell, you know, like the Dunkin' Donuts, Baskin Robbins. It's like auto body shop and shitty Polish food. Dude, you wonder if that's where the idea came from. Just uh, just one day, we need more customers. How do we get? How do we get the clientele? Waiting for your car to get fixed. <laughs> <laughs> like eat at our bistro in this uh, bizarro, like lopsided brick building that's built. I, they had to have hand built that building. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can make fun of EJ Pierogies all you want, but that would have been way better than fucking it, You know what? It, it probably would have been. I've only I heard would, good I things I would swallow about a lug nut for the <laughs> for to get rid of this shit. Only heard good things about EJ Pierogi? Yeah, because I, I work by that area, too. Oh, really? So I, I've not, I haven't gone in there for that reason that you just explained, yeah. but, <laughs> but I heard good things. So. Huh. But, but Dude, I on the way back. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> when, when I worked in that area... Um, I worked at my first welding shop. It was my asshole boss, Joe, the the one who owned five different businesses in a decade. <laughs> and okay. so, so we worked at a welding place, and uh, it reminds me, uh, we worked next door to, uh, so we would weld. That was the coolest welding job we had because it was custom welding. Um, so it was just like art welding. Like you had to do, y- you did like Skyrim blacksmithing shit there because- um, you know, s- one day we spent fucking trying to melt together with a blowtorch a rose out of fucking paper thin metal to put on a railing. We did me- uh custom railings, and you that just sounds amazing. It was, it was really fucking. You know what it looked like? It reminds me of like the way s- uh Slayer ha- they they had like these pentagrams upside down and then Slayer in them, or like Behemoth has three metal cobras on each of their mic stands welded yeah. together. Like that's the kind of shit we would do. And um, right next door, there was these Russian guys who used to weld together uh, parts for um, like commercial cake factories. And my boss... Wait, there's a large enough industry that that was specifically (laughs) what they did? Yeah, we repair cake factories, (laughs) just like back in the mother Russia, you know? Was a bakery attached? (laughs) No, no. no, You you know what was attached to that? The flood company that was full of Scientologists. So just to make shit even weirder on that <laughs> row of buildings. <laughs> but what what was funny is my my the the one Russian guy that worked there looked exactly I don't know if you remember Goldeneye, like Boris. You know, <laughs> I am invincible, yeah. you know? He looked exactly <laughs> like him, had the exact same glasses, and my boss would always fuck with them. And one time, dude, they fucking fl- he pull he like wanted to pull his gun out because uh it was around fourth of July. We threw a purple smoke bomb in their shop. Oh no! Just like Soviet Union bombing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm like, let's try and make this as happy of a prank as possible. What could possibly be a purple smoke? You know, oh, right. actual bomb in a weld shop. I feel like there's a <laughs> fair amount that they like. T- that panic ensued, <laughs> and the guy ran out, and he's like, "I am invincible." <laughs> <laughs> Are they all named Boris? Boris, Boris, Ivan over at yeah. over at EJ Peru in Auto Bath <laughs> or Auto Shop. Damn it, Auto Bath. That, I feel like that'd be a catchy name. EJ Pierogi in Auto Bath. That <laughs> <laughs> like a car wash. Is that what Auto Bath? Yeah, the food would probably be more sterile, dude. Uh, that probably not. <laughs> <laughs> the, the weirdest place on that block was that Scientologist place because, um, so. We had this custom rail shop, and when shit started to go, I mean, it was around like '09 when like shit was going sh- like really bad with the economy. Like, who the fuck is gonna want a 
triple the amount of pay custom railing, you know, when when they don't have money to fucking pay their bills. I feel like right. the weirdest place on any block with the Scientology thing is <laughs> the Scientology thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's not a good competition. Well, well, they were really, like, discreet about it until you, like, started working for them. So when, when that custom welding shop went down under, we're like, fuck it, we'll, like, well, work for them. And I worked f- with them for a while with my boss. Like, he kind of paid me. But so... Um, we're working for them and we realized that like all the high up people, you have to, in order to work in the office, in order to get extra money, you have to convert to Scientology. That was like, like, you know, they didn't say it directly. And, and the, you know what the weirdest thing was that one of the women, uh, who was like high up there, her brother worked there as like a laborer like us. And he was really trying <laughs> to move up. But they they're like, yeah, Jerry, you just you just can't like you don't really have the you know, he he he's kind of slow. He doesn't have the ability to work in the office. He's like, but I really want to join. I really want to join. Like he had that voice and he sort of developed a twitch. And I think he might have done that whole buzz, uh, you know, where they test your brain. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what Scientology yeah, got to him. Know. Sure. I love that that, I'm just that saying, Scientology is real. As soon as they started mentioning the Scientology, he developed the Twitch, is what I'm saying. Hmm. Which kind of, I don't know. The the John Travolta Twitch? Travolta Twitch? I think so, yeah. Oh my God! Right <laughs> there. Um, this is great. It's, it's John Travolta and Tom Cruise, right, are the big ones in Scientology. Yeah. yeah. Beck? Beck is a Scientologist. Beck is a Scientologist? Oh, that's really disappointing. Yeah. Really, that, that, oh, that's really no, disappointing. That, that really fucked shit up for it because I would listen to his music. Uh, that second album or that album, morning something, morning phase. I really like that, and it, I, I, I it like used to help me in the morning. And, and now every time I listen to him, I'm like everything he's saying right now, he's sucking me in. You know, like none of these yeah, songs have like meaning. Yeah, it's all anymore. a lie. It's all <laughs> a lie. Who else? Um, Hyde from that '70s show. Yeah, there's weird shit with him. Isn't there a bunch of like allegations of rape and all that? Probably. That's for everyone, basically. Yeah, yeah I guess Hollywood. it's the Church of yeah, Isaac Church Hayes. Scientology. Oh yeah, Chef. Yeah. Was it the Shaft? No, Chef. Well, from he some. did the theme song oh. to Shaft. Oh yeah, yeah. Isn't that why they killed his character off in the mm-hmm. way that they did? Is because of some of the sci- because well, he they, left they the made show. yeah he left the they show ma- yeah because they made jokes the about Scientology yeah. Good for and him. then they just straight disrespected his character. <laughs> 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 I mean, she have like a pedophile, the the super adventure club. <laughs> yeah, and fu- and then they, uh, what is it? They own the rights to his his vo- voice acting. I think so. They mm. brought him back as a what was it? As a robot or yeah. some shit. <laughs> so <laughs> using his own voice. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. yeah. They had to make <laughs> one episode where Chef is a robot, and they're like, all right. We'll just like everybody knows he's a robot now since that one episode. So we'll just go back to normal, you know. He's just a really good programmed robot. You know? Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Scientology is just one cuckoo's nest. Like holy <laughs> shit. Although it does make you wonder. Like how does that shit? Catch? I get like how Mormons happened. Like it was way back in the day, and like they were on the frontier. And someone said something about gold plates, and like I get how you could get sucked in sure. in 1853, but this shit happened recently. Yeah, well, like the 70s. I think it was the 70s or 80s. L. Ron Hubbard. Well, also he was like a huge science fiction writer. Yeah, like not profit. <laughs> JP's calling. Mm. I'll talk to him later. Sorry for the interruption. No problem. Yeah. Um, did you guys hear about this? Um, uh, Kelly was telling me about this lady who has a bumblebee as her pet. How it's like a cute story. No, no. Tell us the cute story. Yeah, we need more of those. Um, this lady, uh, (laughs) this uh, this old lady, who's super fucking lonely and has no friends and uh, just hangs out all day, found a bumblebee that I guess had its wings ripped off. So she, you know, kind of like those people that are old and make huge model train lands she made like a disney world of pollen for this bee and uh yeah is like best friends with it like she holds so, it so this bee is just like scar facing like 
that's just free base and pollen all day. Yeah, and yeah. This lady's like, we're friends now. The bee's just like fucked up. Yeah, wakey, wakey. It's time to go down Yellow Brick Road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and you know, and this whole time, like when Kelly, t- like I, w- you know, when you're like half paying, like after work, you're half paying attention to a conversation. Like Kelly's telling me, like, oh, there's this bee with there was. I thought she said like born without wings, like this injured bee. So this whole time. And then she saw me, and then I like you know trail off, and she's like, "Oh yeah, they're best friends, and they're it's her pet, and they communicate, they connect to each other." I'm like, so this whole time I'm thinking of like a Stephen Hawking bee, where there's no wing, and she, this old lady built like a little wheelchair for sure. the bee, and then maybe has like Stephen Hawking, you know, like bumblebee mm. voice. <laughs> sure. Help me. Yeah. <laughs> She's the one who pulled my wings <laughs> off. <laughs> buzz, buzz, I'm buzz. so lonely. I need a friend. <laughs> I know about the bee universe. <laughs> <laughs> the bee universe expands. Bzz, there are many honey bee holes in this world. How long yeah. do honey bees live? <laughs> I feel like this should be, sure. sh- no be a short lived. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> no, I have absolutely no bearing on how to answer that question. Yeah. Especially yeah. one that's been like horribly maimed. Like. <laughs> I don't know. Like, that's yeah, gonna that, be the next. That's gonna be a real disappointing pet to have. That's gonna be Evil Genius Part Two on Netflix. <laughs> this woman claimed to have be best friends with this bumblebee. The wings. She was found with no wings, but we couldn't find evidence to point that she ripped them off. We tried to, you know, decipher the Morse code of. Bzz, 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 bzz. I don't know. It, it sounds like it'd be a hit show on Netflix. The Dark Truth. Help us save us. <laughs> what does it matter? <laughs> The untold story. She tied a firecracker bomb to this bumblebee's neck. I don't know. Uh, when Spe- I or wh- yeah, what were you gonna say? No, I was gonna say when I was in, I think it was in middle school. It was science class, and they called it a science experiment. But in hindsight, I feel like that's a little generous. <laughs> where we <laughs> <Okay>. we <laughs> had we had bumblebees, <laughs> dead bees, and we would take a pin and like stab him. And so, like, with our little bee pins, we would, like, pollinate flowers, like, grab it from one and, like, bring it over to another. And That's we're really fucked up. A little bit. Like, L- like why didn't they just, like, there's a way to <laughs> synthetically do that? Why wait, the you, hell did you, they wait, make you again? use, you, like... So, we would take, we would have, like, bees, dead yeah. bees, and we would stab, <laughs> like, um, a safety pin? Is that yeah. Oh, yeah. no, safety pins are, like, the ones that, like, a needle. bend. Yeah, Sh- so, like, a needle. Like, just, like, a straight, straight pin. And we would skewer the bee... And like, you know, buzz, buzz, buzz. Um, like, where were they getting their hands on just a bunch of know. dead bees? To do Science this? supply? Do they know. sell it? Can I buy like a bushel of dead bees? They're getting it from this old lady who claims to be friends of this one. Mm-hmm. The bee. All genocide. of them without I wings. I just found this holocaust of bees in my yard. God, it's dark. Yeah, it's pretty dark. Yeah. Yeah. So that your cute story made me think of that time we played with dead bees, and that's really fun. fucking weird and uh, kind of. I like don't think that would work either. No. <laughs> I think you got to, because I remember uh, when I worked at a greenhouse, they would um, they would pollinate the flowers using like some tool that looked like an electric toothbrush. Uh-huh. It had to have the buzzing to pollinate Oh, really? To yeah, to pick it, it up. Because yeah. you have to pick up the pollen. There's a certain mechanism that like And it was not a vibrator. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe no. it was just my, my teacher's like cruel. I think, yeah. I think your teacher's prank. a prank. Oh, it's like going to be cute to just have like, kids like with dead bees on pins. Yes, play with them. <laughs> this is how it happens. What, yeah, why didn't they do this shit with like frogs and crap? And they w- and oh, we're going to take the knives. And, you know, s- we're in second grade, not first grade anymore. So now we're going to take knives with frogs. And now we're in third grade. So now we're going to take. Uh, you know, the kids who really liked cutting the frogs open always bothered me. Yeah, I hated that shit. I wasn't a huge fan. I wasn't like against doing it, but there are people who really liked that. Yeah, that's <laughs> trouble. And they like dr- reach their hands and like playing with the organs and shit. Like, it's fucked up. Yeah. And they take the heart and be like, boom, 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 boom. Oh, look at the heart still going. Ha! <laughs> Sorry that I just did. I was one of those kids. I think. <laughs> 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 And the smell of formaldehyde. <laughs> right, that shit 
it's so well, good. Then, Honestly, well, I would take over the smell of this fucking <laughs> mac and cheese bowl, to be honest. Is it still just sitting in front of you? It is still just sitting in front yeah, of you. Yeah, do you want to vomit? You know, you know those kids who get like horrible brown chicken and pasta and I like don't throw it out? And just stare at it. <laughs> you know, I think <laughs> I think my vomit would actually look more appetizing <laughs> than <laughs> this does. You know, I hear it's better coming out. <laughs> it has to be because it wasn't real good going <laughs> in. <laughs> God. You know, the, the, um, that just reminded me. Before I was B, uh, when I when to, when I had to leave my um, logistics job, mm-hmm. this reminded me of how bad this thing went. So. I was like, you know, I, I should leave on good terms. You know, I, when the new company calls this company, I want to, you know, two week notice, not be like, fuck you guys, I'm quitting and leave. So I wanted to leave on good terms. And the one thing that was really on my mind, should I confess to this whole row that it's been me who's been all doing all the farts this whole time? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was my biggest thing. Because it's like me and a whole bunch <laughs> of really classy black women. And it, so it's, the, yeah. Oh, where's that cabbage and onion coming from? <laughs> I wonder, you know, and there's me with my eyes going full speed after five Maltagoyas, you know. But <laughs> Wow, what does that smell? Someone really let one rip. Yeah, we work next to a cabbage, to fucking, what is that, El Pierogi Bistro? <laughs> EJ's. EJ's Pierogi and Auto, <laughs> and auto Center. El Pierogi. <laughs> El Pierogi. <laughs> I was gonna say, cause isn't bistro like fucking French or Italian? Yeah, I don't. It's it is Polish bistro. <laughs> so, El, El the Pierogi whole thing bistro. doesn't make any sense. El Pierogi bistro. That just like let me see if everyone. I can let me see if I can pop up a photo. <laughs> There's got to be a picture of this somewhere. So, I, anyways, I'm like, I'm I'm trying to see like how can I leave on good terms with everyone, you know? And I I don't know how it got brought up, but uh. We were talking about Iowa and how. Well, my buddy, um, I think he was tr- he was trying the the guy who made the tarot deck. He was trying to figure out like, oh, where should I? Because he's from Omaha. He's like, where should I promote this tarot deck? You know, he's like uh, he's putting it on all these websites. The the artist, you know, and he's like putting it on uh, you know Reckless Records and I I I I, I forgot four where. and a half stars. Sorry to cut you off. Four and a half stars like and bar- hundred and eighty five reviews. Really? <laughs> so there It's like bear welding, you know? Yeah. Let's go to their it's website. It, Mom think, and Pop Nook preparing pierogi and other Polish bites to eat. Do you think EJ's real last name is Pierogi? I wonder what EJ stands for. It says navigation. Elton maybe? John. Fuck. Elton John Pierogi. That's right. Elton John's pierogies, man. I don't know if that sounds good. 4.5 stars. EJ Pierogi is the perfect bistro to take your honey to in order to get <laughs> some time away together and enjoy a pleasant meal at a very good price. Well, we're not usually ones to boast. We always brag about our amazing food at EJ Pierogi as a Polish restaurant that offers affordable... And then there's... Okay. You and gotta go there and get an oil change, too, and then write a review. <laughs> <laughs> They, uh, yeah, they they <laughs> accidentally give you the oil change at the pierogi place. Yeah, right. oh. Synthetic's a little expensive, but <laughs> but the food was great. Right. You can't park in their parking lot because people just start fucking around with your car. <laughs> you gotta <laughs> park around the corner. <laughs> uh, no, 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 the tires are fine. I just want pierogies. All right. So yeah, this is it. Oh. So we'll totally hit that up on the way home. So <laughs> we, didn't so they have buffalo we fucking should because this is what it looks like. Oh wow! Yeah, let me see if I if I can get a full photo of it with it like attached to this fucking auto. Center. That that looks like a place in like Inglewood, with that with that awesome logo. Inglewood, Poland, right? Inglewoodski. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it is literally attached to the fucking auto shop. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Why is it a different size? That's what bothers me the most. A different size built? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's attached to it, but it's like a three-foot height difference. Yeah. What the fuck? What a wonderful world. <laughs> well, so we're talking about Iowa and my job. Sure. And he's like, what the fuck? Why would I promote it Iowa? What the fuck is an Iowa? And really, what is an Iowa? Slipknot fans. Right? Poses. Mm-hmm. So heavy and drinkers. And I'm, like, I'm like, I don't know, man. Cow, cow tipping, maybe no. And I brought up the story about how, uh, 
when I went to Poland last time, I, this is a really goofy story in my family. My fucking cousin, you, you know how, like, you know how me and Zach were talking about how if you have epilepsy, you got to, like, trigger it to find out that you have it. You, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, you got to yeah. have that first head injury. My cousin got kicked by a fucking cow in the head, and that's when he started having seizures. Yeah, that'll do it. And <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do something stupid. I'm going to try and jump on a cow without it kicking me in the nuts. And when my brother snapped the picture, let's just say it didn't turn out too well because it looks like I'm fucking it in the ass. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and so I'm like, yeah, I'm going to leave this job on good terms. And I found out like after I left, everybody's like, yeah, dude, Phil, <laughs> are you kidding me? That's f- that's another Phil story. Yeah, I. it looks like I'm fucking the cow, but I'm <laughs> totally not. You know, wait. So, I don't, so wait, you're at work. <laughs> it's your last week. Yeah, and you like, brought a cow in. Hey, everyone, uh, <laughs> who watched this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fill that cow, fucker. He yeah, he left. He's out of here. Oh, I can only imagine on the Monday everyone comes back. Your desk is all I, cleared. You out. know, I tried to. I was in denial, and I tried to justify it. I'm like, hey, you know what? I did have some really obese girlfriends in the past, so I guess it like, all right, it's cool. I I fuck cows. I guess it kind of translates. You know, it's in the family, right? Yeah. It's tradition. I didn't get I and I didn't get kicked in the nuts or the head, right? There you go. So, and so second attempt next year, John. We're going. Um, I right. don't know. This kind of sounds like bull to me. Like so what? Like bull? Ah. Ah, is that a cow pun? Okay, I'm going to go shit my brains out everybody. All right. <laughs> All right. We're following Zach to the bathroom. <laughs> uh, all right, coming to you live. <laughs> are, are we going to keep going or break? Let's take a break. Break? <laughs> break? Like mother- wait, wait. All right, wait. <laughs> Sandry. <laughs> Multitasking. Go at the same time. All right. We'll be back after <laughs> after a message from our sponsors. All right, Bill. Oh. I, I got a cow in the back, you and me. Oh, yeah, dude. Right. Would you say this episode's a real shit show? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 